Before I get into the video, I want to thank this person for giving me the idea for the video. And, uh, let's get into it. The St. Lawrence Seaway has been a vital part of both the U.S. and Canada's economy over the years of its existence. Before the St. Lawrence Seaway existed, Canada had always fostered the idea of having a path by sea that would connect the Atlantic Ocean to the Great Lakes and provide a big economic boost. The United States seemed like a viable option for a partnership for the project. The idea was introduced to the U.S. Senate in 1932, but was rejected. Eventually, it was passed in 1954, and construction started after that. Construction finished in 1959, and the locks were open. And now, the Atlantic Ocean was officially connected to the Great Lakes. If you were to go from Duluth, Minnesota, to the Gulf of St. Lawrence, It'd be about 2,340 miles from one to the other. So, it has obviously played a major role in the economics of both U.S. and Canada. Now, let's get straight into the question. How much would it cost to increase the maximum size for vessels on the St. Lawrence Seaway? The idea has been suggested before in 2002 by the Army Corps of Engineers. The idea never became a reality though because of environmental issues. But the idea they had was to lengthen it to about 1,000 feet and to uh, stretch it by about 105 feet and have a depth of about 50 feet. This would mean that large container ships would be able to make waves on the Great Lakes and visit Duluth. By the way, go check out my video on how container ships are now able to visit Duluth. As it is right now, 5% of the world's container fleet visits the Great Lakes. If the extension were to ever happen, that would go from 5% to 27%. And the amount of bulk carriers, which was 10%, would go from that to about 35%. So, the economic boosts would be worth it, but the environment would be harmed. When I say the environment, I don't just mean that the polluting from the ships would harm the environment. It would also be the fact that more invasive species would be introduced to the Great Lakes, which has already become a real problem. Many of these invasive species are killing native fish species on the Great Lakes. So, if this idea were to ever come true, a solution would have to first arise before this could ever become a reality. So, me being a person who likes to fix problems and think of solutions, I've come up with a solution for this. My idea is that they have a lock where each vessel that has to enter in the Great Lakes unloads their ballast water, and whatever is in it will, of course, fall out. Then they have some sort of drain that will suck anything that was in that ballast water into this thing, transport it, and they will search for any invasive species. Therefore, they will be able to separate them from uh, normal species to the Great Lakes. That's my idea. Just, you know, a, I guess, sort of solution. But anyways, back on track. Thing is, if this were to happen, it would create $1.5 billion in economic benefits annually. So, that's obviously a lot of money, and it would create a lot more boosts in our economy. So, after all of this build-up, and with no further ado, I am now going to answer the question I introduced at the beginning of the video. How much would it cost to expand the Seaway Max size of the St. Lawrence Seaway? The answer to that is it would cost about $20 million dollars to do pre-construction studies. And the cost of the project itself would be around $10 billion. And that would be to enlarge the seaway channels and locks. So it would be a lot of money, in other words, plus a few other things that I'm leaving out. Anyways, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think that this is a relevant idea? 
and if so, put it in the comments, and if you don't, also put that in the comments, uh, so subscribe, leave a like, and I'll see you in the next video.